Many of the prophecies in Scripture focus on a theme or message without giving much reference to the order in which the events take place. Additionally, much of prophecy is veiled in symbolism, making it difficult to put prophetic events in their proper order. There are, however, a few prophetic statements that give a clear sequence of events using plain and simple language. When we use these clear and simple prophecies as our guide to the prophetic timeline, then we have a foundation and a reference for identifying the proper order of other prophecies. In the December 1980 New Era magazine, Ezra Taft Benson said, Before he comes, the testimony of the servants of God will be rejected, by and large. Because of this rejection, great calamities will befall the nations of the world. His first appearance will be to the, to the righteous saints who have gathered to the New Jerusalem. The second appearance of the Lord will be to the Jews. The third appearance of Christ will be to the rest of the world. Elder Charles W. Penrose also said, We may consider the inhabitants of the earth at the time immediately preceding the coming of Christ under three general divisions. First, the saints of God gathered to one place on the western continent called Zion, busily preparing for his appearance in their midst as their Redeemer, who had shed his blood for their salvation, now coming to reign over them, and to reward them for their labors in establishing his government. Second, the Jews gathered to Jerusalem and also expecting the Messiah, but not believing that Jesus of Nazareth was the Son of God, and being in danger of destruction from their Gentile enemies. Third, the corrupt nations and kingdoms of men who, rejecting the light of the gospel, are unprepared for the Lord's advent and are almost ripe for destruction. When Jesus visited the Nephites, he prophesied of the future of the Gentile nations, and specifically regarding events that would take place in America in the latter days. He said, Woe be unto the Gentiles, except they repent. And in the following verses, the Lord then describes in great detail how he will cleanse the land by destroying the wicked. Continuing in verse 20, For it shall come to pass, saith the Father, that at that day whosoever will not repent and come unto my beloved Son, them will I cut off from among my people, O house of Israel. So there will be a total and complete division of society. Those who continue in the corruption of Gentile culture will be cut off from those who identify with the culture of the people of God. And I will execute vengeance and fury upon them, even as upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. These verses describe the wrath of God that cleanses America and prepares it to be the holy gathering place for the righteous. But if they will repent, and hearken unto my words, and harden not their hearts, I will establish my church among them, and they shall come in unto the covenant, and be numbered among this the remnant of Jacob, unto whom I have given this land for their inheritance. And they shall assist my people, the remnant of Jacob, and also as many of the house of Israel as shall come, that they may build a city, which shall be called the New Jerusalem. Doctrine and Covenants section 57 and section 84 identify Jackson County, Missouri as the area where the New Jerusalem city will be built and the center place for the gathering of the righteous. Now Jesus begins to give us a clear sequence of events by using the words, and then, meaning afterwards. And then shall they assist my people that they may be gathered in who are scattered upon all the face of the land in unto the New Jerusalem. So after the new Jerusalem is built, the people in the land will gather to it. And then shall the power of heaven come down among them, and I also will be in the midst. After those in the land gather to the city, Jesus will come to reign as King of Zion. And then shall the work of the Father commence at that day, even when this gospel shall be preached among the remnant of this people. So there will still be many of the descendants of Lehi, the remnant of this people who haven't been converted, who will begin to come unto Christ in Mass. Verily I say unto you, at that day shall the work of the Father commence among all the dispersed of my people. Yea, even the tribes which have been lost, which the Father hath led away out of Jerusalem. Yea, the work shall commence among all the dispersed of my people, with the Father to prepare the way whereby they may come unto me, that they may call on the Father in my name. The times of the Gentiles end when the Gentile nations sin against his gospel and reject the gospel, 
at which point, as Jesus described earlier, the wrath of God will be poured out upon the Gentile nations and America will be cleansed from all of its wickedness. And here, the times of the house of Israel begins. The Lord is going to prepare the way for the ten tribes to literally come unto Christ by their pilgrimage to Zion, where he will already be reigning as king. The work commencing among all the dispersed of his people also includes his coming to the Jews in Jerusalem. Yea, and then shall the work commence with the Father among all nations in preparing the way whereby his people may be gathered home to the land of their inheritance. And they shall go out from all nations, and they shall not go out in haste, nor go by flight. For I will go before them, saith the Father, and I will be their rearward. After the elect have been gathered in Zion and Jerusalem has been redeemed, the Lord begins to prepare the way for the tribes to return to the lands of their inheritance in Jerusalem. Now that we've gone through Jesus' prophecy, I want to fill in a few details on the pilgrimage to Zion. Doctrine and Covenants 45 says, And it shall be called the New Jerusalem, a land of peace, a city of refuge, a place of safety for the saints of the Most High God. And there shall be gathered unto it out of every nation under heaven, and it shall be the only people that shall not be at war one with another. And it shall come to pass that the righteous shall be gathered out from among all nations, and shall come to Zion singing with songs of everlasting joy. A portion of Israel is currently scattered among all the nations of the earth. These will all be physically gathered to the safety and refuge of Zion in America. Another portion is already gathered together as a civilization that is currently lost or hidden from the rest of the world in a place referred to as the North. This group is called the Ten Tribes, or the Lost Tribes. Jesus visited their nation after he visited the Nephite nation. They have their own records and scriptures. John the Beloved has ministered to them and has been preparing them to come to Zion. Though the world is unaware of this civilization, they are aware of us and will soon be restored to the rest of the house of Israel when they too physically gather to the new Jerusalem. The president of the church holds the keys to lead them from the north. These things are all explained in plain, simple, and clear language in the scriptures. You can learn all about this topic in the Old Testament student manual, Kings through Malachi, Enrichment D, The Assyrian Conquest and the Lost Tribes. The link is in the description. Doctrine and Covenants, section 133, describes the pilgrimage of the lost tribes to Zion. And they who are in the north countries shall come in remembrance before the Lord, and their prophets shall hear his voice, and shall no longer stay themselves, and they shall smite the rocks, and the ice shall flow down at their presence. And an highway shall be cast up in the midst of the great deep. A landmass will raise up in the ocean upon which they'll travel. And they shall bring forth their rich treasures unto the children of Ephraim, my servants. Among those treasures will be the record of when Jesus visited that nation, the Scriptures. And there shall they fall down and be crowned with glory, even in Zion, by the hands of the servants of the Lord, even the children of Ephraim. After the tribes come to Zion, they are crowned with glory. This is the sealing of the 144,000 recorded in Revelation chapter 7. As you read Revelation chapter 7, notice that after John sees the sealing of the 144,000, he sees a great multitude who had already come out of great tribulation and had been gathered from all nations and are before the throne of God. In other words, Jesus was already reigning in Zion among a great multitude before the tribes arrived to be sealed. President Nielsen recently wrote, True, in the early days of the church, conversion often meant emigration as well. But now the gathering takes place in each nation. The Lord has decreed the establishment of Zion in each realm where he has given his saints their birth and nationality. The place of gathering for Brazilian saints is in Brazil. The place of gathering for Nigerian saints is in Nigeria. The place of gathering for Korean saints is in Korea. Zion is the pure in heart. It is wherever righteous saints are. Spiritual security will always depend on how one lives, not where one lives. I only mention this to emphasize that the time for gathering to the New Jerusalem is not yet. The prophet holds the keys for the gathering of Israel. Always follow the prophet, and you will do right. Now we'll read from the latter-day vision given in 1 Nephi chapter 14. 
For the time cometh, saith the Lamb of God, that I will work a great and a marvelous work among the children of men, a work which shall be everlasting, either on the one hand or on the other, either to the convincing of them unto peace and life eternal, or unto the deliverance of them to the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, unto their being brought down into captivity and also into destruction, both temporally and spiritually, according to the captivity of the devil of which I have spoken. And it came to pass that he said unto me, Look, and behold, that great and abominable church, which is the mother of abominations, whose founder is the devil. And he said unto me, Behold, there are saved two churches only. The one is the church of the Lamb of God, and the other is the church of the devil. Wherefore, whoso belongeth not to the church of the Lamb of God, belongeth to that great church, which is the mother of abominations, and she is the whore of all the earth. This describes a great and marvelous work that the Lord will do, which gradually polarizes society into two groups, which Nephi calls the Church of the Lamb of God and the Church of the Devil. Of this great division, Ezra Taft Benson said, I testify that as the forces of evil increase under Lucifer's leadership, and as the forces of good increase under the leadership of Jesus Christ, there will be growing battles between the two until the final confrontation. As the issues become clearer and more obvious, all mankind will eventually be required to align themselves either for the kingdom of God or for the kingdom of the devil. Nephi's vision continues, And it came to pass that I looked and beheld the whore of all the earth, and she sat upon many waters, and she had dominion over all the earth among all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people. And it came to pass that I beheld the church of the Lamb of God, and its numbers were few because of the wickedness and abominations of the whore who sat upon many waters. Nevertheless, I beheld that the church of the Lamb, who were the saints of God, were also upon all the face of the earth, and their dominions upon the face of the earth were small because of the wickedness of of the great whore whom I saw. And it came to pass that I beheld that the great mother of, of abominations did gather together multitudes upon the face of all the earth, among all the nations of the Gentiles, to fight against the Lamb of God. This is likely the great tribulation that John saw the righteous would come out of. And it came to pass that I, Nephi, beheld the power of the Lamb of God, that it descended upon the saints of the church of the Lamb, and upon the covenant people of the Lord, who were scattered upon all the face of the earth. And they were armed with righteousness, and with the power of God in great glory." What Nephi sees here is obviously before the gathering to the New Jerusalem because the righteous are scattered all over the earth. And it came to pass that I beheld that the wrath of God was poured out upon that great and abominable church insomuch that there were wars and rumors of wars among all the nations and kindreds of the earth. And as there began to be wars and rumors of wars among all the nations which belonged to the mother of abominations, the angel spake unto me, saying, Behold, the wrath of God is upon the mother of harlots, And behold, thou seest all these things. And when the day cometh that the wrath of God is poured out upon the mother of harlots, which is the great and abominable church of all the earth, whose founder is the devil, then at that day the work of the Father shall commence, in preparing the way for the fulfilling of his covenants, which he hath made to his people who are of the house of Israel. After all this, the Lord commences in preparing the way to fulfill his covenant to gather the house of Israel. And how does he gather the house of Israel, or where does he gather them? He gathers them in Zion, the new Jerusalem. That's the sanctuary, the the gathering place for the righteous. And so commencing his work is building the city, the new Jerusalem, the place of safety. The wrath of God poured out cleanses the land, which opens the way for building the new Jerusalem. So when we put all of these together, it gives us a pretty clear picture of the general order of events. Here is a list of more prophecies which seem to be associated with each of these events. Some of the references are color-coded to show that they come from the same source. For example, look at the red references to Revelation. Notice how Revelation covers some but not all of these events. It's easy to get confused regarding when and where things happen without having an overall reference with which to compare. I hope that this helps you as you study Isaiah, Daniel, Revelation, and other prophecies. As you better understand Latter-day Prophecy, you'll better understand your role in God's plan and your mission in life. As you dedicate extended, quiet,
personal time to studying the scriptures, you will feel the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will enlighten your mind. He will expand your vision. He will fill you with His light and power. Listening to podcasts and YouTube videos can be good, but they can never give you what you can receive through one-on-one time with the Lord. Take the time to search these things yourself and let Him teach you, and in the process, He can make you holy.